All right, so we're back with our uh, our third part of our first session. We have learned a little bit about the Duchess, and uh, we're going to start. Wow, that was really here. dramatic. I mean, that was what I was going for. Um, you with one hit on a on a magical community, you have not heard of anybody identifying themselves as Duchess. Okay. Which could mean a, a large number of things. Well, maybe he's killed everyone. It could mean two things. I mean, it, it could mean another things. You could have totally met him, and he just doesn't introduce himself as "This is my super cool, totally not lame assassin name that I kill people as." Right. I mean, it means either he's not part of the magical community, or he is, and I don't know him. I mean, I guess or I don't know things. it. Okay, anyone who, I mean, except for the broker who gave us the info in the first place, any other contact that has any potential to give us something? Uh, would it be helpful to talk to my, um, my, my talismonger buddy? Okay. I mean, since we don't know of any of him in the, uh, magical community yet, he may not even be involved in it. As well, far as I I could ask my talismonger friend if he knew of anybody named Duchess in the magical community. Mm. You could give it a shot. Give it a shot. That's a long shot, I feel. But that's like asking uh, a street clerk, does he know anyone, like, you know, an assassin? Well, I, I could also ask him if he just knows anybody that runs with the street name Duchess. Uh, even somebody that's not awakened might have reason to purchase things from a talismonger. It's entirely possible. Um, how do I... What do I roll there? Two times his connection, plus his loyalty. Uh, Which, as I scroll down to find him... I've got him, got him. It should be ten dice. Yep. Uh, no, your pimp does not know anything. Sorry. God, really? We are so terrible at this. I mean, it's not uh, necessarily that you're so terrible, but as... Wow. The, um, so, uh, he's not exactly a an advertising type person. Outgoing. Public. Well spoken. I'm going to take my brand worldwide. Uh, so Sue, tell me a bit about your your talismonger. Who are they as a as a person? What kind of stuff do they deal in? Um, Karlheinz Stockhausen is a uh, human. He's uh, a German expat uh, that has a little shop in the the community where uh, we live. And where is that um, community? Um. I'm not sure if we nailed down exactly where it was. That's where I was talking to you about, like, kind of a, um, like a lower end, like an immigrant neighborhood, like kind of a, a lower income neighborhood. But so like the Barons lower income, or so like no, no, income? like well maybe it would be the Barons, but like they would take care of it. Like there would there would be like a community watch, and like they would all clean up and help each other fix their houses and stuff. But it, it wouldn't be like a gated community or, you know... It sounds a little bit more like Tacoma underneath of uh, probably some kind of minor gang or organized crime thing, kind of like... They're not exactly keeping the streets clean from, like, drugs and stuff, but they're keeping other people selling worse drugs out. You just gotta buy their drugs. Yeah, there would it would be like uh, the the people that made up the community would protect the community, um, but it wouldn't be the sort of community that, you know, the the police response time would still not be super great, and you know if you went two blocks in either direction, you might be dealing with not so pleasant a part of town, that sort of thing. Okay. Um, yeah, that's probably Tacoma, but we can nail that down a little bit later on. I just, uh, I just, uh, I just want to point out that I love the fact that your uh, talismonger is like has this like super cool German name, and my talismonger has like a dexy chunk. It's like <laughs> that's that's the difference right there. Um, 
so you know what's just... going to be more cool about that is look up that name. He, um, it's it's a composer that does things like uh, write a quartet for helicopters. Okay. Um. Okay. So yeah, what kind of stuff does he does he usually deal in? Um, he would like create uh, foci and and fetishes. Um, he might have, if there was any reason for, like, community meetings of the various awake individuals that were nearby, he might host that sort of thing or have get-togethers with them. Uh, he might also occasionally use his shop, um, as a, a secure meeting place, uh, for other, other people to, to use that is magically secure. Um, he wouldn't necessarily, uh... It's not. It's not like going to be like one of those places that sells like, you know, all those books like teach yourself Wicca or all that kind of crap. Right. Um, more like a like a dusty little curio shop with a a decent sized uh, area in the back where he'd have like his lodge and and some meeting space. Okay. Um. So yeah, no, he'll he'll answer the phone, and uh, does he know you as as Sue, or does he know you as something else because he's your contact? Huh? That is Cause he I, would know me by he's got a pretty high loyalty with you, so I don't know. Yeah. Um. So I haven't actually worked out what my real name is yet. Sure, but if if uh, you feel like that, he will refer to you in in your preferred honorific with him. Because he is he is your friend. He's like ah, how are you doing okay, this just evening? Call me soon for now. We can work that out later. Yeah. Somebody's ringing. Yeah, sorry, that was me. Sorry. Uh, yeah, so he will he will answer the phone with a ah, good evening. It's it's been a little while. Ah, my friend. Yeah, I know. Too long. Too long, but one week now, perhaps, maybe two. Perhaps it's gonna be the battle of the bad German accents. I lo I'm loving it. <laughs> keep on, keep going, keep going. Let's buy the shop soon. But I I wanted merely to call you. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm wondering there there is a piece of business that I'm pursuing, and. A person of interest has come across my desk. I I cannot for the life of me <laughs> you will find this so funny. I cannot for the life of me remember if he is a member of our community or not. What is his name? The name he goes by is <laughs> <laughs> oh. uh, Herzogen uh, Duchess. You'll hear like a uh, of like a a book being closed. You are sure this is his name? Yeah, it's um, it's Duchess of English. Uh, th this is what was given to me. You'll hear like a, a little tinkle of him going through a a beaded curtain or something into the back room that you you've got an idea of where he is in his shop. Listen very carefully. This man is very dangerous. Long ago, he used to be involved in the circles. No. Uh -huh. However, he started using... I don't use the word dark, but... unsavory aspects of our craft. Hmm, Johnson. Was was he then expelled from this, or does do you know anyone who keeps in touch with him? I do not think anyone keeps in touch. However, there was no official sanctioned actions against him. He, mm. he seemed to be very interested in the unhealthier aspects of things. Naga I'm sorry, say, 
asp poison all kinds of horrible awakened things that can do very bad things to a man yeah yeah I understand okay so this is someone who uh, in in which areas is he talented in in which areas does he he is very talented in the areas of death and pain. <laughs> uh, I'm wondering if this is a, um, a Zauber, a, a, a Spellcaster, like, um, uh, you know, like yourself, or more of a one who, who talks to the spirits, or more of the alchemy. I will have to ask some very careful questions to find that particular answer. Give me some time hmm. in the front. Press him. Don't give him time. Press him. Go ahead and uh, erase him from your contacts. Uh, he's going to be dead in a few days. <laughs> I, I would ask you, of course, to tread very carefully. If uh, I certainly don't risk to uh, wish to risk anything uh, untoward happening to you as a result of any inquiry, please uh, do let the matter drop if there's going to be any sort of entanglement. I will be very careful, my friend, but you should be even more so. This man is not of a good man. No, I will. Yeah, well, I appreciate the advice and the warning. Be safe, uh, sir. That I certainly will do. Um... And perhaps, you know, in another one week's time, I will stop by the shop uh, and say hello, yeah? Do not take so long. It would be good to know that you have not been dead. <laughs> you still have the pony keg of the September brew? Da? Da? I mean, I don't, I don't know what Germans say, I'm sorry. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah naturally. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's good, yeah? Okay. Bis später, mein Freund. Tschüss. And he will uh, apply German honorifics back to you and hang up the phone. In the, in the correct <laughs> way. <clears throat> yeah. Sorry, I panicked. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. That, that was perfect. That was perfect. I have a, uh, I have a bad case of wandering <laughs> accent. <laughs> Secretly, it wasn't his contact the whole time. It was an impersonator, and now we've given up our intentions. Okay, so what what did we get to know from this? So he was uh, he was most assuredly nothing. magical of some kind. He is into very dangerous things, uh, like the naga venom and the the asp poison and that kind of stuff. Is a great way to kill people. Well, shit, if he's going to, like, poison him, that there's not much we can do except, like, keep shooting food out of his hands. Um, well, uh, from the information that we had before it suggested that uh, he didn't have a particular uh, signature method or anything that he relies upon exclusively. Uh, we he he's to, to engage it. Let me, let at me any range real quick do you want to do you guys want to do anything else or do you want to just pass time until your contact gets back to you with more information no, someone rolled for some security contact I think that's about it well I was going to see if I could roll a matrix search because I realized A I wasn't doing it in hot sim hot sim will probably you know be a good thing it'll give you more dice yeah. um Dante, tell me about your security corporate contractor person. Well, I figure with the uh, Connection 3, he's more higher end than in the field. I was envisioning him maybe working in dispatch with okay. sending out small security teams. And what, uh, what company does he work for? I don't know enough of the companies in Shadowrun to have picked one yet. Okay, so Knight Errant has the, the general... Um, they're the cops in the area. They're the guys that are going to be your your pretty standard dudes. 
each of the the major corporations is going to have their own private police force because it's cheaper that way however dependent upon the location they may have those guys or they may have night errant goons in there yeah probably night errant then lone star has a uh, has control of the prisons and a couple of other different security uh, contracts in the area. Yeah, night air sounds good. Sure. I mean, I figured that's what it was, but I figured I would also uh, go for clarifications. There's a matrix search. I love it. Appreciate it. Uh, so, with two hits, what do you? What kind of information are you asking him about? I was just calling to see if he'd heard the name and if he knew anything about it. I, he he recognizes the name, but not anything specific, uh, which just kind of reinforces the fact that he's a an Aries dude, um, and has maybe seen it come across his desk for a thing recently. Um, is there anything else? Like wait, wait, who, who? Like the Duchess is a no, Aries dude? That uh, <laughs> Sergeant Ernest Holstein mm -hmm. is. Oh, well, okay. Oh, I was asking about Duchess. Oh. Yeah, he's got nothing on that guy. Okay. Fair enough. That's fine. Um, so, the last we spoke to Johnson, she still she didn't know or was representing as though she didn't know uh, who was after our guy. Uh -huh. Is there anything that we could gain by cluing her in? Because she, she was supposed to call us if she found out. Would it be useful to let her know? That's up to you. that's up to you guys. If you like, theoretically, the exchange of information is is always beneficial. But she's not exactly a team member. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. after this week, you guys are going to be going back to being and effectively enemies because she is a person with a sin and an identity and a real job, and you're an illegal criminal doing illegal things for money. So after this week, you're no longer yeah. you're no longer friends. So to speak. Yeah, those senators, they're they're awful people. Yeah. <laughs> they're the There's worst. also the possibility of they're like, oh, so we found this out. She go, oh, well, in that case, I've got this handled, and I don't need to pay you for the rest of it. So I would vote no. There, there is also the part of like, um, how much stock is a a corporate person going to put in what some shadow runner that you hire to do a thing is telling you from another shady information person that you don't know anything about. It's like, yo, my buddy well, told me about this thing that we just met, but, you know, you could totally believe me and him, right? Isn't she hiring us because we're experts at doing what we do and she would expect us to be able to figure out? I don't think she's hiring us uh, because we're experts. Uh, one of she's hiring us because we're nobodies. One of the things is that she specifically said that she's hiring you because you don't have an established reputation. Um, which means a, a couple of different things. One, it could mean that she has no no connections of her own to hire a stronger team. It could also mean that because you guys are unknown, the people like Duchess who are out there and might be... Um, on the lookout for other people who have taken jobs to get in their way, like your street cred, notoriety, and public awareness would go into helping other people recognize you, or so it's harder for him to, to see us because you're exactly nobody. because you're nobody. Like he, like this information that you're finding out about them is based upon street cred and notoriety and public awareness and that kind of stuff, because this. Pr Duchess is an established criminal element that does a lot of murder. Okay. You're finding this stuff out through asking questions, not because he's got a Yelp page that has, hey, here's are my reviews for about the people that I killed. <laughs> we get on his Ask Angie's uh, Ask Angie website, and it'll be great. <laughs> Top 100 assassins in Seattle, please. <laughs> oh, I'm matrix searching that. Give me a second. <laughs> Um, Please do that from your Google browser. So, Hex, your uh, your matrix search here. What are you What are you digging for? I'm trying to see if they have any information on the Duchess, the assassin, any rumors on boards or anything like that. 
Okay. Are you doing just like a like a three hit search, or are you going for the six hit search? Uh, I'm gonna try and go for the six hit search. All right. Thirty so minutes. Go ahead and give me another roll. Sim, I'm in. Well, uh, give me another roll. Negative one die. Negative one. Because mm -hmm. it's now an extended test. Okay. So one less. Yeah. <laughs> Look at you. So wow. eleven. With one yeah. less guy. Nailed it. So it's gonna Yay. take you a couple of hours. Only like three, maybe around there. Um, so a lot of what you're going to find is rumors and conjecture some of it lists them as a team, some of them lists them as a as an older guy you know, bald head, glasses some of them list them as like a, a, a young female gnome some of them say that they have used uh, long range weapons, some of them say uh, excessive displays of magic the more recent uh entries, as I struggle for that word, is of more personal, hands-on, like gave the dude a, a slash on the back of his hand with a knife that had some kind of poison on it. Um, there is usually a a higher profile, like more important people that they uh, that they have done. Um, let me see what kind of other things. What the? Uh, what else would you like to know? Um, I think that kind of answers the questions pretty good because that's a lot of information. Can we find out um, about like what fixer they go through? Um, yeah, you could probably f get an idea. Um no like contact information but you could probably get an idea of who they use for a fixer um which a couple of uh words in the right ear could could bring you to that person okay hmm so guys tell me if this is a stupid idea um what if we posed as a client? Well, does he take... We don't know anything about him, and that would actually waste us a lot of time I mean, and resources. The because information what if he takes additional jobs? We, we, know that, um, we know that he's a, a, a renowned assassin, and we know what kind of fixer he is likely to work with. If we posed as a Johnson and went to that fixer, and said we were looking for, you know, the best, um, there's a possibility that we could get him to just come to where we want him. Yeah, but he might be working for a particular Johnson. Like he may go Johnson's meet in public places, and both sides generally are going to expect treachery. So, I mean, I don't know that that would give us, like, any sort of ambush on him. Yeah, not usually. Plus, he may go to a particular Johnson. And also, then come through him. He didn't do it. Also, uh, our last bit of information told us that he has recently been leaning towards melee. That he does a lot of magic work, and he can is widely skilled. I mean, what else are we wanting to know about him? It's not necessarily just clarifying questions about the information, but clarifying questions to me as the GM and the information that I have given. And not even necessarily specific about the information that I have just given. If you want to ask something about the uh, the stuff you found out about him earlier, we can, we can kind of mush this into one giant dossier. Um, any weaknesses or vices or anything? <laughs> Does he shout a, a a phrase before going into battle? Does he uh, swing in with his his banjo and and shout something? Does he have the the signature move negative quality? 
<laughs> um, so he doesn't have the, the 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 negative quality of signature that kind of thing. Um, one of the things along that line that you will find out is there have been reports that he's died, and yet somebody of a similar description always kind of ends up getting credit for another assassination a couple of weeks later. Oh, it's a name that multiple people fill in, hence the wide variety of assassination styles. Okay. Shit, that doesn't help us a lot. That means that... Could be. That means we know absolutely nothing about this no matter what we do. <laughs> but, but that means... Well, it, that it, means it could be that. It could also be that, um, like, we just watched one of our friends turn into somebody else right in front of us. He might have a habit of doing that and then killing somebody who looks like whatever the hell, you know, he wants to leave a corpse looking like and then going away. I mean, generally speaking, one person, uh, I've been thought, thinking it was strange, now it makes more sense, one person doesn't assassinate with, you know, sniper rifles and melee and magic all, like, in different it like, in different instances. In fact, uh, GM, I would like to ask you a specific question that might help narrow this down a little bit. Sure. You said that there's always a wide variety of uh, of styles he uses. Are these, like, will he go on the spree of this one specific thing for a while, and then maybe there's a report that he dies and he changes his style? So it's... Let me, let me just break it down here. I'm not going to... Especially in this run, I'm not going to contradict things that have been established in the narrative. So this is... Like, you may have mentioned that, oh, well, that's, this is what's happening. This invalidates everything we've learned so far. It's like, no, that's a dick move. So, no, it is not a group of people operating under the same name this time. Okay. Or, like... Well, dang it. I thought it was smart. I mean, it's definitely a thing that it could have been, but I would have... That's not where I was trying to lead you guys with the information that I was giving out. Um... But it, I, I could definitely see where you got that, uh, drew that conclusion. Come here. Um, that being said, it, the, the confirmed kills that this guy like 100% was behind, it seems to be like the most effective way to to get at this guy, get it, get at their target. Sorry, let me, let me clarify that. Um, you know, sometimes you don't want to try and get close to the guy. You want to just take him out from a from a range with a high power rifle because you know that he's not going to have a fast medical response. So, like a couple of bullets will just put him down, and you don't have to worry about a dock wagon come in and resuscitating him. That kind of thing. Sometimes you're in a uh, a place where you got to get a little close to the dude. So. You know, you can sneak by him in a crowded area, like maybe a convention center, and you can just kind of bump into the guy, give him a little nick, and then keep walking, and then, you know, ten seconds later, he falls down dead on the ground, and you're down the corner <laughs> and around the street. Um, and sometimes it's as simple, like, the dude who... There's at least one report of uh, just some, like, hotshot ganger who was for whatever reason, somebody paid this guy's price, he walked into the clubhouse, pulled out a revolver, and just put the guy down. And that was the end of it. Sometimes it's... It's about making a statement. So either we make, like, a really powerful spirit mash him up, or, like, uh, something, or we all jump him. Or we just avoid him. Or I don't know. Or we really go with the plan with taking the guy into like the sub basement of the sub basement and just hide. I don't want to try and like stifle your efforts here. So if there's something else that needs clarification, please. please. I think we have some connection issues, like according to the chats, some something. So that was no longer hearing anyone. I think he just dropped out, so he's just restarting his Discord, but, yeah. Yeah. No, it's... 
It's not a big deal. Didn't we switch to Discord because Skype was giving us this problem? Yeah, I don't trust his setup though. Oh, okay. Fuck. Uh... Okay, so, um, uh, okay, okay. Uh, so he's an assassin that's super skilled and he's supposedly died a few times and came back. That's not important for us. What's important for us is, is that he has multiple avenues of, of approach and he sometimes uses poison. So I guess we should have, like, so maybe the general approach is the best, like have someone near him, uh, I mean the target at all times, but someone skilled. Uh, mm, do we have someone who's skilled at pretending to be, like, staff and capable in hand-to-hand -hand combat? We don't have our Ours. capable monk. Our staff person can hang out and keep an eye on any booths or whatever he chooses to go to. He's at. Um, I can fly overhead in this in my uh, fly drone because you know there's dozens of drones in the area. That one's not going to draw any suspicion, and it looks like a fly for all intents and purposes. Okay, okay, but um, what I have in mind is that if he gets attacked suddenly, I'm getting there. Okay. We, uh, yeah. We have people who are more hand-to-hand -hand focused nearby that aren't necessarily disguised as staff, but just convention goers. So, I mean, they wouldn't follow him directly because that's suspicious, but when staff is getting seen all the time or a fly is nearby, eh, whatever. But they would be the ones who are available whenever it's like, hey, I see suspicious character with the word Duchess written on his back walking towards our guy, stop him. And then they jump in. I mean, that, I feel like that'd be a good plan of attack, at least for convention time. Before that, it's just you know, surveying. I know, I know, I know. It's a, it's a good plan. Uh, but uh, uh, the thing that irritates me, it's just like in the internet. If we had known nothing about who's attacking, uh, and we know very little about it. But we are just playing defensive very blindly, and it's very hard to do that. That seems like this is, this, is a, yeah, this guy's whole shtick. He's all smoke and mirrors, he makes people think all these mystical things about him, but ultimately he's just a skilled assassin, so he, he wants to keep us guessing, and it's going to be kind of hard to do otherwise without, I don't know, talking to his victims, <laughs> who are all dead. Oh, wait, spirits. Wait. Spirits are not ghosts. Damn it! They are not the dead. Um. So I want to contact my necromancer contact. Um. Yeah, I have one of those. Yeah. I'm I'm rolling up a newspaper right now to whap you with it. <laughs> um. Okay. So I, I'm a, I'm out of ideas. Uh, officially, I don't know what else we could do. I don't think I have any contacts that could help, except like calling the broker again and maybe asking for that calling and then calling him and like. Hey, Duchess, you know, how about, like, five thou and, you know, don't come. How about ruin your reputation and, uh... You know. But hey, you, just, you know, me. stay at home. We will do it for you. What about that, huh? Sure. Um, so this sounds like a good time for us to, to kind of call it for the evening. You guys can discuss it a little bit during the week. Um, sure. Um, as this is to be like a bit of a educational aspect, is there anything that you guys want me to pull the curtain back on behind the decisions that I've made, the situation, just anything you want to ask me about? Maybe about the uh, contact stuff, like, uh, oh no, 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 sorry, uh, about the, uh, uh, because you're going to be like right now revealing the, the your 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 uh, thought process behind stuff. Yeah, I'm not going to give away anything that like is going to to spoil air quotes the end of the run. But but okay, you know so, we're uh, getting to know each other. I want to open this line of communication so that if you guys have questions, you can you can ask them. Okay, I know this is. Oh, sorry. Okay, so I'm going to just ask one question. Uh, where do you, how do you know when to cut people off when they're overcomplicating? Because this is actually a really uh, valid thing that you did when you were like thinking and thinking about stuff. I guess you wouldn't do that normally, not at least not as quickly. Uh, um, it kind of depends, because like this, 
different groups handle it different ways and at times people will come up with um like every once in a while in groups like somebody clearly comes through as the the leader or the idea guy um and in that situation you know we we i lean on that guy a little bit more for him to to steer the flow of conversation and that kind of stuff um here like i i gave you guys this run one because it was the kind of like where you guys wanted to go like i asked you guys what kind of run you wanted to do at the beginning in addition it is very open-ended there is a lot of different things that you can do here whereas if i give you guys a run that's like oh shit the convention center's on fire i need you to evac my vip right now you guys don't have any time to to work together as a team you have to go or things that are more um specific or direct or, or railsy like you guys don't have that operational freedom to kind of stretch your legs and, and do what you want to do. There were a couple of things that you guys threw out, like, four ideas tonight that I was like, man, I hope they do that, because that sounds fun. But... Evac target with a giant balloon and a helicarrier? Yeah, I think that sounds fun, too. <laughs> I mean, that's um, a, there's yeah, I guess we should for that, think... obviously, but we could totally make something up down the line. We what should probably review the we should do. plans we have and see which one, which ones we actually like. Yeah, because like this is, this is very open ended, so that you guys can, can flex all of those muscles, so that you guys can have those different conversations about the different things that your characters can do, and so, so that we can get to know each other as a table. Like that's so, j just as a as a thing, uh, can maybe someone copy the things that we have written here and uh, into like a word document or something? Yeah, or yeah. is the table accessible? You can. The table is always accessible. You guys can just go to roll twenty and click on it and jump on it. Awesome! Awesome! And you can use the uh, the Discord and the or the Skype chat to talk about things. Um, I I chose to jump in when I did earlier because like. I said last week, I'm like, look, our, our first run is about communication. It's not about winning or losing. I'm not playing at this from an adversarial aspect. Like, when when you shape changed your face into looking like the guy, it was like, all right, you know, this is interesting. Let's see where you're going with this. As opposed to, no, you guys got to, like, um, bunker down and kind of just set up words and stuff and all kinds of other crazy defensive emplacements and drones and um, that's part of the reason why I also put him at a convention center because there's going to be a lot of people there. It is very easy for you to to blend in with them because it's just people from all walks of life. There's going to be criminal people there. There's going to be runners there. There's going to be, you know, Aries corporate executives there. There's going to be all kinds of stuff going on. So, next time, for fun, even though I might not be able to get here, but I'm going to do everything I absolutely can, too, because this is a blast. Um, I, what we can probably do is just take the information that we've got and, you know, make plans A through whatever letter we want to go through with the with the said information and go with that. Now, of course, you know, there's the whole keeping security up for a week, making sure nothing happens, but presumably this is going to happen at the convention center because, you know, climax and stuff. Uh, I mean, that, that really depends. It's a lot of it's in you guys' favor. I'm not yep. going to be like, oh, you guys left him alone at his hotel from Wednesday to Thursday without doing a damn thing. Well, that's when he died. Sorry, because that's a dick move. <laughs> and um, that was actually that's actually very related to a question that I wanted to ask you about your 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 style here. Like, you know, you're obviously listening to us having our ideas. Um, you don't seem like the type who's brewing in the background. It's like, oh, 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 they're, they're, they're not thinking of this one thing that I decided was going to be the main thing. and Or they're not thinking of this thing. And because I'm able to hear all of them, they're, they're, I, I know how to get around their plans. Like, um, do you have a set plan ahead of time? Or are you kind of like evolving the enemy's plan based on us? The amount of information that I had prior to sitting down was that uh, the Johnson who the Johnson was, and a little bit about her motivations. Um, the target, and why he is, air quotes, important, and the fact that it was going to be at the convention center. That convention center that's right there is more or less the Indianapolis convention center from when I went to Gen Con for seven years. No. You know, that's I stayed in that hotel that's across the street in the breezeway. So you didn't Are have... Are killing you? 
No. Oh, no, no, sorry. No. <laughs> what? What? Wait, that was a Freudian slip. Are we protecting you? <laughs> no. Um, the the way that the information played out, like the assassin at some point during during tonight, I decided what I was going to use, and it is based upon a another run that I was involved in. This assassin was the uh, was the antagonist. Hmm. So I have recycled him, and uh, that's why some of the information is a little wishy-washy. But that'll be hopefully made more clear later on. But I didn't want to like, um, like with the killing him on Wednesday thing. I I would seed information if I had planned ahead of time as to where and when I was going to make my strike on him for whatever reason. Let's say that he was a uh let's say that he was a political candidate. No, oh, this is a this is a bad thing to talk about on a recorded thing that's gonna be up on the internet. <laughs> Hello, NSA <laughs> Uh let's say he was a humanist poly club member who was making a speech at a humanist rally. Obviously the assassin will and it will probably have been seated in there that the assassin wants to make a the statement by taking him out at the uh, during his speech, that kind of thing, because that's how you make a big political statement. So you have information that maybe would help us in the run, and whatever method that we go about to getting it, you adjust the information to have appropriately come from that method, but you do still ultimately give us the information. I, as long as you don't bomb every role to right. uh, <laughs> to acquire information, like when you critically glitch that. The not you, the the collective you, um, right? I gave you a list of information, and I told you when I gave it to you that some of it is going to be incorrect. I have not decided what of that information is incorrect. Okay. As we as we continue to go and evolve, it is a it is a hook there that I can use later if when you guys start mo working on something, or I say something else later down the line, and it conflicts with that information. It's like, oh, well, sorry, you got wrong information when you Googled him. Or it's something that I can see later on and, like, um, use against you. Like, for example, let's say that you you looked at the fact that he was in a gay marriage, which I put in there so that your face had the opportunity to try and seduce him. <laughs> oh, my God. I have the opportunity to just freak out and shut that down in front of you. If you did no other research into it, if you just like, oh yeah, no, he's in a gay marriage, like, you know, dress yourself up as some pretty elf boy and go hit on him, I can throw that down on the ground in front of you and be like, get the frag away from me, you, you know, and just throw expletives at you and that kind of thing and have you thrown out of the convention and arrested because you went off of something that could have been bad information that out of character you knew was bad information but in character you were like well my character doesn't know they critically glitched so this is what I found guys huh. well we have two faces I mean let me just be honest with you here One uh, giants. having a romantic encounter with a giant just sounds uncomfortable uh, <laughs> that's it that bit about two faces is very metaphorical. <laughs> he, he may like a partner who can take charge. <laughs> he also might like being able to control his bowel movements. Maybe. It's just one of the... Like, there's... I had a friend of mine who we, we discussed characters with one time, and uh, he mentioned his character was into, you know, more or less anything except for troll dudes and orc dudes. And I was like, well, that's specific why. And he's like, well, trolls just sound uncomfortable. And, well, orcs are known to have litters. And it's not worth the risk of having, like, it's bad enough to run that accidental risk and get pregnant. But to run that accidental get risk and get pregnant with, like, four to six children? Nah, I'm good. Was well, that... I don't know what kind of bioware this guy's got, but I don't think I'm running a risk of him getting pregnant. This is true, but... There is and I appreciate the vote of confidence from everybody assuming which role I would be taking uh, during those activities. Here to help. 
Um, but you know, that's just some of my my behind the scenes thought processes because, like, I'm not setting out to to screw you guys over because that's not fun. And then you guys say, yeah, "Fuck you, yeah, you're an yeah. asshole," and you don't play anymore. But did you guys have anything else yeah. you wanted to ask? You wanted to talk about or? Yeah, um, next session, I guess we'll get into it. Um, I'm going to try and summon and compile or compile and merge to a sprite. Sure, we can do that right um, now. It's so real that's... quick and easy. Ready? What, uh, kind, of, what kind of sprite? <laughs> I wasn't ready. What's going on? What? <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking I want to try for a crack sprite first. Okay. Now, I know to register it, I'm going to have to resist fade a negative dice pool equal to their level, right? Just their level, not their level times. Let, let's let's start off. We're going to go compile. All right, you have decided on a fault sprite. What level fault sprite would you like to compile? Or not fault, uh, crack. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, crack. Crack sprite. What level crack sprite would you like to require? So I'm thinking four, right? Okay. Because it's, it's pretty good, right? I mean, it's eight dice to do things. Which doesn't sound bad. Now, I'll have to resist versus... So we're going to roll your, your oh, registering okay. plus... I'm sorry, roll your compiling plus your resonance. Which I should already have in here. Specializing compiling this sprite. New. Fade resist bonus. I do not have a bonus to resist fade. Level, definitely not six. I want to go for four. Oh, this sounds like a fancy macro that's going to do all the work for me. Yes, oh, yes, 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 it is, because I've already put all this information in on the uh, character sheet. Uh, I don't think I have any situational modifiers. Nope. Oh, yeah. One success. But I did it. Wow. The, that's some uh, some fade right there. God damn. Mm-hmm. Mm, yeah. Mm. Mm, I'm eating some no, fade. On. One, two, three, four, five. I got one success, but it doesn't tell me how oh, many... Oh, uh... my God. <laughs> no, you, you look like you're good. So, what happened? You rolled half sixes. God. Yeah. So, uh, you rolled three hits, it looks like, on your... Uh... I'm trying to see that it's showing, and it's really hard to understand exactly. What yeah, let's let's not use this for sense. this because this doesn't seem like this is going correctly. Because it's got it yeah, says one it success is... here, and then it has sprite defense of two hits, which is. I'll try it again. Let's see if we can figure this out. Hold on, hold on. it looks. Because if, if you hover over the one next to one success, that shows what his roll was, and his roll was That's poop. Just... I know. Just summon my sprite. Oh no, he failed. Compile it. Yeah, yeah it looks like you failed. Sprite. Took a bunch of fading and then resisted said fading. Resisted the hell out of that fading. Sure <laughs> um, nothing happened of note this day. <laughs> <laughs> you were like, I should have a sprite. Wait. <laughs> oh, let's wait, try no, it again no, real quick like there. <laughs> Yeah, let's try it Wait. again just to see if we can figure out how the uh, the macro works. Where did the times two on the fade come from? Come from. So when a uh, when a sprite or spirit rolls to resist being summoned or compiled, it rolls its its level or its force, mm -hmm. and then each hit that it gets causes two points of fading. Worst. Ah, I thought it was one point per hit. Okay. No, it is two no, points. That's hit. why I'm trying to be real on the low end because we're going to summon force three or four. Well, because if it rolls half decent, I have an okay chance of resisting fade. But if it rolls real well, I'm screwed. I mean, you have 11 dice to resist fade. That's pretty substantial. Yeah, that's why I'm afraid, though, because if I summon at force six, it'll yeah. and it rolls half its dice in success on a 
you know, three on a really good roll. Three successes. That's six fate I have to resist with only eleven dice. So let's, I mean, uh, statistically uh, speaking, it's all right. <laughs> so there's a there's a complication to this this macro setup here that let's not use it because it discounts edge. Mm. And edge makes the whole thing a little bit more complicated because you could edge your compiling roll <laughs> and you could edge your fade resistance roll. And I don't like to. Uh, yeah, let's see how this works. Yeah, because you could choose to edge the fade resist roll after you see. Oh, well, he got a lot of successes on that, but you can't choose to fade, edge it once you see what his results on those uh, dice are for the fade. It's more like I don't like the idea of how that that like that first roll played out where he automatically knew how much he already knew that he didn't suffer for it whereas if he was doing it in the moment um, he could have edged the, the compiling role in an attempt to get that sprite to show up instead of just trying again mm -hmm. so in this in this situation yeah. what you did here is you, you got your four successes the sprite got three so you would have a sprite with one task and you would have taken big three, taken three points of stun damage. Yeah, I was gonna say three points of stun damage though. That sucks. You you That's could tough. edge your phage resist roll if you wished, but you do also have a couple of days of time. <laughs> this has taken like three seconds at first. <laughs> yes. And the problem is, this means that I have to register this guy fairly quickly because he's gonna be getting Overwatch. He's got about 15 minutes before he starts calculating, yes. So, <laughs> that means I need to register quickly. Yep. Is it registering, like... It'll take like you about... Four, it'll take you one hour per level of the sprite. So, four hours. Yep, and you can just, like, go back to your your domicile and do it there. Or... Yeah, that's what I was thinking. And then you can scrub him so he doesn't have any base Overwatch score. Woo! When you uh, when I register, when, when I get away. Oh, okay. Oh, uh, similar question it's... about summoning. Mm -hmm. Um, with the time that it takes to bind, does that it? Well, the spirit's in the middle of being bound. Does does he still leave at sunset? No, nah, that would be a dick move. Okay. Um, I'm sorry, did you have all the questions answered that you wanted to about sprites? Uh, I don't know if I want to register this sucker, because it, it's going to be rough. Um, There's also a, another, like, um, like, a legit strategy to to compile a sprite and blow a point of edge to attempt to get a lot of um, a lot of tasks out of them. Because when you go to register them, uh, you'll get significantly less extra tasks. If that makes... Because, like, on your... On your compile test, your net hits become serve, become tasks. On your compiling... On your registering test, your net hits become tasks as well. But on the registering test, they're rolling a lot more dice to resist you. Yeah, so on the compile, it's easier to edge to get more tasks, and then just... Right, because their dice pool is smaller. Yeah, but I'm also likely to knock myself out because 2 dB per hit on the red string as well. Yep. Remember, you have edge. I am click the little edge button. I want to see how it applies that for the sprite. I'm hoping for the, the survive the fading roll. That's what I'm wanting to do, but I don't know if it'll separate it. I do not know. Like I said, we can just use regular typey typey things for this because it's just uh, a little extra complicated for no reason with the, the macro. Yeah. If it were to just show the incoming fade at the end of the macro, then the macro would still be useful because it just simplifies oh. one roll instead of compiling them all into one. I know exactly how to do this. I actually know exactly how to do this. If you're going to use the edge, what you'll do is you'll click the register and when it asks you your question, it starts with specialization, no, no specialization. I mean, then you go through fade resist bonus. 
Are you going to add a bonus to your fate resist? Yes, three because my edge is three. I'm spending point eight, right? The other problem you're going to run into is when you pre-edge things by adding your edge to it, your sixes explode. Mm hmm. That's true, isn't it? Yeah. So, um, I'm just going to go ahead and say we should probably just stick to typing it out for sprites because normal, mundane, typey roll. Okay, well, if I'm going to roll it. I, I, I can't hear you over the, the dinner in the background. Sorry. Yeah, no. um, if you were to roll it, how would you add the uh, exploding sixes on you there? Put an exclamation point after the greater than five. So, just like... Uh... Wouldn't that explode everything that you know, was greater than five? No. Damn. That is a roll. That's what I'm thinking. That is one hell of a roll. He gets one action for the sprite per success that is... Uh, uh, net success, that is, right? He gets one task. Each task can do a number of different things that when the sprite comes up, we'll we'll get into a little bit more in depth with that because that's a, that's a long conversation. That sprite will last the entire run. Um, okay. Okay, so I have what ten dice to summon a sprite or to register a sprite. Resident skills compiling for you. So I have ten dice to register a sprite with. So that would just be roll. Ten D six greater than five. What you doing there, Rig? I'm trying to figure out you added the exclamation point at the end after the five. What did that do? You see how I rolled eight D six? You see how there's yeah. way more than eight dice there? Oh, that's the edge thing. Mm -hmm. So you want to roll the eight dice for the Yeah, I'll, thing I'll roll or... the eight because I I enjoy this part. I saw that 13, I thought that was a sprite first. I was like, fuck, I'm dead. <laughs> uh, so you have a, a crack sprite that is registered with two tasks, and uh, you have to soak four fade. Now, do I want to edge the fade, or do I want to just roll it? In this situation, I wouldn't bother, because it's not enough to knock you out, and you are presumably, after spending four hours, would put you at at least probably midnight on Monday. Then you're just going to go mm -hmm. to bed and sleep it off. Which sounds fine to me. Yeah. And speaking so... of going to bed and sleeping it off, I feel like that's what we're all about to do. Yeah, excellent transition. Um, can I uh, do the sprite thing at the beginning of next run? Or not sprite. The spirit? Yeah. Yeah, we can do that right now. I can do it so that you know how badly you get screwed. Okay. Um, I wanted to find out, like... How big of a force? Uh, like I know that the the bigger the force, the more like smart they are. Mm -hmm. uh, does it translate into like one force equals one logic, or more or less? Yeah. Okay, so like a force two would be smart enough to not be difficult to deal with. And a I mean, Force 3 would be, like, as smart as a person. Yeah, just because they're smarter than you doesn't mean that, like, they're going to genie logic you all the time. Well, I, w I wasn't really worried about that, because uh, I planned to be nice to them. I just didn't want, like, you know, I thought of, I was thinking about summoning and binding a, a Force 1 just to, you know, not have to worry so much about the drain. But then I, I don't know how much good it would do to have a Force One spirit running around. Well, it's not going to have a whole lot of services it owes you because of the way that limits tend to work, and it's going to have like two dice to do most things that you're going to ask of it. Oh, okay. Um, so, what would be the minimum force that would be worth binding? That is that is not a question I can answer for you. Hmm. Like, 
the more four like spirits take reagents to bind. Right. So it kind of depends. Like higher four spirits obviously can do a lot more, but they're also going to cost you a lot more dollars. Um, I thought it was just uh, like, is it how many drams per force? It's about five hundred new unit of force. Seriously? Uh huh. Is that for summoning or binding? It is only for binding. You can just summon a spirit because because you want to summon a spirit, but for binding, it is five hundred new unit force. Okay. Um, and if I wanted to like, basically, I was thinking about like I wanted to make a point of uh, giving him extra or. Is essentially I don't want to be enslaving this guy. I I want to have him, you know, uh, basically agree to stick around past sunset or whatever. Mm. How would I do that? As a summit thing, you don't, because it like maybe like there is no general. Hey, hang out longer than you want. Like, there's nothing you can really do mechanically to say, besides binding, to keep spirits past their time if they don't want to be there. Right, but I, I know that there was a thing in, um, uh, what was it? Not Spell Grimoire, but whatever the magic book is. Street Grimoire. Um, yeah, that was talking about, um, like, astral reputation. Um, and... Uh, basically, things that you can do to to keep your reputation positive, mm -hmm. um, and one of which was like offering to do stuff for them in exchange when you bind them, or giving them extra stuff, making so promises. That, like when when we get to the spirit in question, I can give you answers because a spirit of man is going to ask you to do different things than a spirit of fire than a spirit of water. I, I would be trying uh, Spirit of Man. Like, it, I I can't give you answers to that until we get into the situation as to, like, the things that you are going to ask of it will have a greater input on what it's going to want out of you. Does that make sense? Oh, uh, okay. So, well, I don't really know what I would be wanting for the services yet. And the services will vary from, from time you summon a spirit to the next time you summon a spirit. Okay. Like. Um, let's see. Actually I think I'm gonna I'm gonna hold off on that. Um I've got I've got enough reagents to bind a force two. Uh, which isn't really all that great. Uh, so I think I'll, uh, I think I'll play with that a little later when I can set up a permanent lodge and, and such. Sure. Because I, I, it takes three agents to do that too, so I don't, I don't think I would actually be able to bind some of them. Yep. Uh, Rob, I have just a question. Can I set up a te temporary lodge, uh, let's say, at the back of a van? You can, but when that van moves, you will lose the effect. Because they get kind of anchored into the the manosphere of the planet. That's that's what I was talking about. Okay. okay. Damn it! Sorry. That just means that nobody else can do it back to you if it makes you feel any better. Yeah, well, okay. Uh, okay, so I guess uh, even though I'm not going to sleep, because at my place it's like 6 o'clock a.m., then uh, I'll be gone now. And uh, I will write on the board anything that comes to mind if I have any problems. And are we talking on Discord now? Like the mass conversation? Sure. I will have Discord and Skype open all the time on my phone, basically. I check it far too often. Wow, you, you have no social life. Like, uh, oh, and only on Skype and Discord, and you know everybody's talking to me. It's more the fact that like when I'm at work and not doing anything, because I ride the elevator a lot at work due to uh, 
working in a hospital. So I got well in the elevator. I got a couple of seconds. Let me pull out my phone and anybody send me a message? No, nobody loves me. Oh, oh! If you're in that situation, I would totally like to not uh, <clears throat> to uh, message love you. Love me long time. M mess message you. <laughs> so, all right, guys. Uh, I think that's going to be it then. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Uh, uh, it was great. I can't wait to actually, you know, protect this guy. It sounds less dramatic than I hoped. But... <laughs> I mean, we haven't decided whether or not you guys are going to be successful yet, so let's let's find out how, how protected he's going to be. We can decide if we're going to be successful? I mean, wow. you can just sit in the hotel room and enjoy the jacuzzi all week. Well, we got some money up front. No, I mean, it does sound like a plan. <laughs> all right, guys, thank you very much. I'll be around all week. <laughs>